The Euphrates River has been drying up for some time, but now rumors have begun about the appearance of gold mountains in the riverbed. But how can a mountain appear out of nowhere in a riverbed? And why is the news of gold mountains such a significant discovery? Let's have a look. The gold mountain was first seen in a piece of news published by National Public Radio a few years back with the title, Drought Revealed Iraqi Archaeological Treasures. The drying up of the Euphrates has revealed ancient archaeological sites, some of which were unknown until now. Is there gold under the river? Where did the gold mountain appear? The drying up of the Euphrates River is concerning and at the same time awaited upon by different societies. In Christianity, it is a very important signal for the tribulation period and a major sign of Christ's second coming. From the earliest days, the river played important roles in every civilization. For the Jews, the Euphrates is frequently viewed in the Hebrew Bible as a physical boundary defining inclusion and exclusion. For example, in Genesis 15, God covenantly promises Abraham land with the Euphrates River making its eastern border. Genesis chapter 15 verse 18 reads, On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your offspring I give this land, from the river Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. Subsequent passages such as Joshua chapter 1 verse 4 confirms this case. In Genesis chapter 31, we see that Jacob crosses the Euphrates to bring his new family to his parents and brother in order to reunite with his tribe and get away from his uncle. The Euphrates is employed as a literary border to represent the Israelites' isolation from their homeland following the Babylonian exile. The authority and ownership over the river were seen as a symbol of wealth and power. 2 Samuel chapter 8 verse 3 reads, David also defeated Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to restore his power at the river Euphrates. The Euphrates also served as Solomon's true geopolitical border. By rerouting the Euphrates River, which passed through Babylon, Persian king Cyrus of Persia's soldiers had managed to take control of the city some centuries before. The river Euphrates has a massive significance in biblical history. The first book, Genesis chapter 2, verses 10 to 14 reads, A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divided and became four rivers. And the name of the third river is a Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. For Assyria, which is modern-day Turkey and Iran, Euphrates was the name for their river god. From the eastern Anatolian highlands, the Euphrates River flowed south through Assyria. The ancient Sumerians of the Mesopotamian civilization also benefited from the river. The Euphrates River, which is around 1700 miles long, is the longest in the Near East. It was referred to as the Blue River by the ancient Sumerians. Around the 4th millennium BC, Sumer experienced the earliest flowering of civilization thanks to water from the Euphrates. Numerous significant ancient cities, including Mari, Sippar, Nippur and Uruk, were situated on or close to the river. The heartlands of the later empires of Babylonia and Assyria were created by the river valley. The name Puratu was given to the river by the Babylonians and Assyrians. The Euphrates River also served as the western and eastern boundaries of the Persian Empire for many years as well as the eastern limits of effective Egyptian and Roman administration. But now, according to recent news reports, the Euphrates River is drying up. How would a river that provided life for civilizations for thousands of years dry up at once? one might wonder. According to a study at the University of Arizona in the last century, the river's flow has fallen by more than 60% as a result of dams and irrigation projects in Turkey, Syria and Iraq. These water shortages and the impact on those who depend on the river for agriculture and fishing have tremendously affected this area. What does this drying up mean in the light of the Bible? Five times in the Bible, the Euphrates is referred to as the Great River. It served as Israel's inheritance's eastern boundary. Israel was somewhat protected by the river because the Euphrates was challenging to cross. Plus, a desert lay between Israel and Canaan, the promised land to the west. The river traveled about 1,200 miles towards Palestine before turning southeast towards the Persian Gulf. When the last book of the New Testament, Revelations, was written in the first century, the Euphrates separated east from west, and to the east lay the kingdoms of China and India. The only way the soldiers could take control of the city was by rerouting the water. On the dry riverbed, the Persian soldiers were once able to march into Babylon and take the city. As per Revelations, the kings from the east will cross the Euphrates during the Great Tribulation. Revelation chapter 16 verses 12 through 16 reads, 
The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Then I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are demonic spirits that perform signs, and they go out into the kings of the world to gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. Look, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed so as to not go naked and be shamefully exposed. Biblical scholars and theologians disagree on who the kings of the East are because the Bible is silent on the matter. The kings of the East are often seen as a reference to the ascent of China or other Asian countries as significant political and economic forces. The most recent news regarding the Euphrates River is about the appearance of gold mountains in the Euphrates. Gold has drawn humans for as long as there have been people. Gold has long served as a crucial asset for building up and guarding wealth from the pharaohs to modern-day men. Gold has been valuable to humans since ancient civilizations. It both practically and symbolically emerged from the Egyptians and the Incas as the medium of exchange, a store of value, and a pricey jewelry and other artifacts, gold has been used for centuries. Everyone agrees that gold has always been valued and will continue to be in the future. Since gold does not corrode, it became a sign of authority and immortality in many prehistoric cultures. It was the perfect material for the ruling classes to use to assert their dominance and status due to its scarcity and beautiful features. From the history of humans, it's crystal clear that wars will involve the most valuable resource gold. Now, latest videos around the Euphrates River show people easily mining and harvesting gold from the dried riverbeds. The appearance of the mountain of gold has a vast significance in Islam. According to several hadiths attributed to the Prophet Muhammad in Islam, the Euphrates will dry up and disclose undiscovered wealth that will spark conflict and war. Soon, the river Euphrates will disclose the treasure of gold, so whoever will be present at that time should not take anything off it. The Prophet Muhammad said, the hour will not come to pass before the river Euphrates dries up to unveil the mountain of gold for which people will fight. Ninety-nine out of the one hundred will die in the fighting, and every man among them will say, perhaps I may be the only one to remain alive. The Prophet Muhammad said, the Euphrates reveals the treasures within itself. Whoever sees it should not take anything from it. The Euphrates will uncover a mountain of gold under it. It can be concluded from these hadiths, that at the time, close to the arrival of the Hour of Judgment, the River Euphrates will uncover a treasure of gold or a mountain of gold, meaning the gold will come out as a mountain and people will fight over it because it is one of the trials. But he forbids those who witness that incident from taking it out because no one will be saved from it. In the Bible, the Euphrates River is mentioned in relation to the fall of Babylon in Revelation chapter 18 verses 11 to 19. The chapter discusses Babylon's enormous wealth, describing it as a city of gold, silver, and precious stones. The verse claims that the loss of Babylon's wealth and treasures, which include gold and valuable stones, will cause the merchants of the world to lament its destruction. Although these predictions don't expressly mention gold, they do imply that the river is connected to money and riches. These prophecies have been taken by some as proof that the river might have substantial gold reserves. This has given a rise to rumors that there might be gold in the river. Another fact worth noting is that an extensive archaeological burial site was recently discovered as a result of the Euphrates Dam Lake's declining water levels in eastern Syria. The Byzantine era archaeological site in Raqqa province covers a sizable area on the eastern bank of the lake created by the Euphrates Dam. Numerous archaeological sites that were drowned in the waters of the two rivers that flow through Syria, Iraq, and Turkey have been discovered as a result of the Euphrates and Tigris waters dropping over the previous three years, and many valuable elements, including gold, were reportedly found under it. Even if there is a widespread notion that a mountain of gold has appeared after the unfortunate drying of the Euphrates River, we can't confirm that is a fact. It's not visible to the naked eye, but still, it is true that from the riverbeds, the residents living in the banks of the river have flocked to mine up the gold that appeared with the lowering of water. What do you think of this? Can this gold mined by the locals be seen as mountain of gold? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys soon.